Hi students, welcome back to geology. Today we are talking about the classification of metamorphic rocks. The last lecture you watched how metamorphism works and now you are going to learn how to classify and identify metamorphic rocks. So metamorphic rocks are classified on texture and composition. Surprise, surprise, like most of the other rocks, we start with their texture and then we look at what they're made of. So the composition can either be mineralogical or chemical. Each metamorphic rock has a parent rock or a protolith from which it was derived. And like I said, the protoliths are going to be igneous rocks, sedimentary rocks, or other metamorphic rocks. So looking at our identification chart here, this is a very basic one. There are a few other metamorphic rocks that you might encounter, but in this intro class, we are just worried about these guys here. So <clears throat> the first thing there with texture is, are they foliated or not foliated? It's the big deciding factor there, right? So if they're foliated, you've got slate, phyllite, schist, and gneiss. If they're not foliated, we're looking at marble, quartzite, or anthracite. So we want to look to see if we have interlocking grains or interlocking crystals, or if we're looking at something that is parallel and lined up, which is the foliation, right? So then you would go on to grain size, and then the comments tell you something about the composition. So with slate and phyllite, those are very fine to fine. And so those are going to be very small particles. And then nice and schist are more medium to coarse. So you're going to be able to see the crystals a lot bigger. Okay, so a couple of things here. Um, with the slate and phyllite, I'll show you some pictures in a little bit. But the big difference there is going to be the appearance on the surface, whether it's glossy or it's dull. Okay, and then with your marble and quartzite, the two big things there are that marble is made up of limestone. If you remember from the sedimentary rocks identification lecture, limestone is made up of calcium carbonate, which is a base. And a base will react to acid. So if we put acid on limestone, it will react. Since marble is made from limestone, if we put acid on marble, it will react. However, quartzite will not. Quartzite is made of quartz sandstone, and quartz sandstone does not have basic material in it, so it's not going to react to the acid. And so if you have two samples that you're trying to decide whether it's marble or quartzite, that's a really good indicator is one will react with acid and one will not. So if it reacts, it's marble. If it doesn't, it's quartzite. So let's start with trying to identify parent rocks or protoliths. So take a look at these samples, see if you can figure out which one is a protolith and which one is a parent rock, sorry, which one is a protolith and which one is a metamorphic rock, and then see if you can identify which one goes to which. So go ahead and pause the video and then I'll talk about it. Okay, so with these samples here on the left, everything on the left side, so 25, 21, and two, those are all your protoliths or parent rocks. And then 42, 41, and 37 on the right there are all metamorphic rocks. So number 25 is limestone, 21 is sandstone, and 2 is granite. So granite is a protolith or a parent rock for gneiss, which is number 37. So if you didn't kind of notice, they are kind of paired up there. So 2 goes to 37. 21 goes to 41, and 25 goes to 42. So 21 is your sandstone, and your sandstone will metamorphose into quartzite, which is 41. 25 is limestone, and limestone will metamorphose into marble, which is 42. Okay, so when you're working with these rocks, you're going to want to make sure that you can start to identify first what rock type they are, because that's going to help you narrow down which identification chart you would use, and then from there you can identify the actual rock. So it'll take some practice, but this is just kind of getting you familiar with that. Okay, so we've talked about foliated versus non-foliated. Now we're going to actually start looking at it in the rocks. So like I said, the first thing you want to do is decide if it's foliated or not foliated. Not, if it's not foliated, there's no arrangement of the grains, plain and simple. If it's foliated, it might have one of these particular fabrics, so it might be slaty, schistose, nisic, or phyllitic, and all of those just describe the way the minerals are arranging in the rock, and they point to the particular rock. So if it's at a slaty texture, it's slate. 
if it's got a schistose texture, it's schist and so on and so forth. Okay, so with our foliated metamorphic rocks, these are the four that we're focused on. We've got slate, delight, nice, and schist. Um, and these all have the arranged crystals or grains from that applied directed pressure. So you can also look at not only that they are pair, the grains or crystals are parallel to each other, but you can also figure out which direction pressure was at the time of its formation. So the first two we'll look at are slate and phyllite. They are often confused because they're from compacted grains. One is just more metamorphosed than the other. Um, but the big difference when you're identifying is that slate is going to be dull and phyllite is going to have a sheen to it. So B is phyllite and A is slate. Slate, like I said, is dull to the surface and phyllite is going to be shiny. Technically, phyllite has a little bit of a wavy texture in it, but oftentimes it's such a fine grain that's really hard to see. With schist, which is our next grade of metamorphic foliated rock, we can see a couple of different things here. So most of the time we're looking at mica. So we have a lot of muscovite, biotite in this specimen. It's almost entirely made up of those crystals. And then sometimes they're found with things like garnet, which is that center picture there, the far left. That has a bunch of little garnet crystals on it, and we would call it a garnet schist. And then depending on the type of mica in the rock, we might also see a glaucophane schist, which is that kind of bluer one, um, or we might see a green schist, which is the upper right. And it also tells us something about the metamorphic grade as well, depending on which of those we see. So with schist, a lot of the times you're looking for something with a very scaly looking texture, which is all of those micas that have aligned themselves parallel. Then we get into nice. Nice looks like an organized granite for the most part, because it kind of is. Um, it's protolith is granite. And as the minerals are going through directed pressure, they start to align in this black and white banding. So if you see a rock with black and white banding, it's usually fairly indicative that you're looking at gneiss. And those are just the felsic and the mafic minerals basically organizing themselves. Then we get into our non-foliated metamorphic rocks, which include marble, quartzite, and anthracite coal. Like I said, marble and quartzite can sometimes be hard to tell the difference between because most of us are used to looking at marble as that slab there where it looks like a slab of marble or like a countertop. Um, but in the field, that's not necessarily how marble looks. So these are both images of marble, one that is naturally polished by flash flooding on the left and one that is just an oxidized outcrop of marble. And so this is from the alteration of limestone or dolostone. <clears throat> and so it still contains that calcium carbonate in it if you drop acid on, or vinegar even, on any of these rocks, they will react. Whereas quartzite, since it's made up of quartz sandstone or alteration of quartz sandstone, it will not. And so you can kind of see, I know these pictures may look really obvious that they're different in photograph, but when you start looking at them in hand sa sample, um, it becomes a lot harder to identify them because they both have interlocking crystals and they just look crystalline. Um, but as long as you can determine that one of them is reacting with acid, then it's going to be a lot easier for you. All right, and then the last one here is anthracite coal. So anthracite coal, like I said, is made up predominantly of carbon materials. So this is coming from the original protolith, which would be bituminous coal, which is a sedimentary rock that we talked about in the last couple lectures. And so what happens here is we already know that bituminous coal is really low density and has a lot of packed carbon in it. And this is further packed carbon. And so it gets even shinier and even less dense. Um, so if you were to take a lab exam, between those two rocks, oftentimes I only give you one or the other, and as long as you identify it as coal, we're good. Um, but it can be really hard to tell the difference between bituminous coal and anthracite coal, but technically anthracite is further altered 
bituminous this coal. And as we approach that 50 kilometer mark, we start to see partial melting where the light colored silica felsic minerals are starting to melt. So this shows you some of that partial melting and we're starting to see rocks turn into igneous and they're no longer in that metamorphic zone. Okay, so like I've hammered you several times, the rock cycle is important because we're not losing or gaining rocks, but any rock can aspire to be any other type of rock. And there are many forms of this rock cycle that you can create. This is a real basic, something you would probably put in your notes. I've shown you some other diagrams that look more complicated. This one's a real basic one that you could copy into your notes that would be good to have on reference and it helps see how you get from one rock to another and in all of the different variations that you can get. This is another one, but like I said, in your notebook, I'd make sure you have some sort of copy of one of these. That way, when you're studying in the future, it's right there and you don't have to reference back to my PowerPoint or my videos. You have it right there in your notes for you. All right, so some metamorphic rocks, like I said, display foliation from the direct pressure, and then some are non-foliated. We classify these rocks based on their texture and composition. And as we approach that 50 kilometer mark, we start to see felsic minerals melt, creating the partial melting that I showed you in a couple of photographs. And as always, the rock cycle shows that any rock can become any other type of rock. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.